we haven't really done much on the channel as far as breeding and the whole breeding experience goes is feed the first meal to a bunch of baby snakes. And we think for a fully representative experience or kind of illustration of how breeding works or how it goes when you breed snakes, sometimes they eat, sometimes they don't. We figured we'd bring you along while we feed a bunch of snakes their first meals. We are going to be feeding the first meals to three different clutches or litters today. Uh, I say clutches or litters because these are these were born. They weren't hatched, so they yep. weren't from a clutch. They were part of a litter. This is one of our adorable baby Argentine boas, which you haven't seen after their first shed yet. So they take yeah, a look. They're escaping they're from each other's friends. Yeah, they're so curious. They want to explore. They don't have that baby sheen anymore. And instead, there's this gorgeous silver color. They are tremendously be even more more beautiful than they were when they were first born, and it is so cool. Uh, but they haven't eaten yet, so we are going to give them the entire litter, or clutter, debatably, their first meals. We're gonna see how many of them wanna eat. We don't know what to expect. I think out of the 22 babies, I'm gonna s predict that 15 of them will eat. Okay. Uh, what do you think? Well, we thawed 10 mice, so we I'm hoping for 10. Uh, right, yeah. Typically on the first meal when you feed a clutch, you don't thaw as many rodents as there are babies because they're not all gonna eat on the first try. So yeah, we have thawed 10 mice to start with and we're going to see who wants to eat. Yeah, we're also probably gonna be doing ball pythons because we have a clutch of them. Yep, they haven't shed yet, so they're not ready to yep. eat yet. And probably hognose because those are the mo the hardest ones to get eating in Ooh, our opinion. So. Good idea, yeah, so we can we share with you. We for eggs and, and babies. babies. So this video is gonna take a while, I just yes, realized. We don't even have hog nose eggs yet. Nope. That's all right. We'll get there. But yeah, we figured we'd bring you along on this experience because it's kind of, might be kind of interesting to some of you. Calm down. Oh, upset baby. Wow. Upset baby. Oh, he'll probably eat. He might. Yeah. <laughs> or he might just strike at it. That's he true. is not happy. All right. Anyway, <laughs> the first meal we always offer to our baby snakes is a frozen thawed rodent. We don't want to start them on live because I mean, yeah, they're probably going to be more likely to eat it, but then it's going to be trickier to convert them to frozen thawed, which is a little bit more difficult for the people who end up buying these snakes and keeping them as pets. He's so, being a little he is explorer so, here, today. Go in your cave. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so we always try to start them on frozen thawed and eventually if they go long enough with refusing frozen thawed then we try some other techniques. But we're gonna try this and see who decides to eat it. Yeah. I have, I think this is a good size. I mean I looked at the middle part of their body and I think this mouse is gonna leave a little bit of a lump behind. This is a small adult mouse and I think that's a good size. So, hi baby. Can you smell the mouse? Oh, yeah, flick your tongue at it. Here's my patented back and forth technique, by the way. Back and forth. Oh. Oh. oh, oh, what? Oh. What was that? Let's try that again. Maybe he just struck it like a rattlesnake and yeah. now wants to go back. Okay, yeah. we'll try. That was a food response, I thought. Wanna smell it? Now back and forth. I just move it back and forth about an inch from side to side, and that seems to do the trick to catching their eyes. It works especially well on hog noses, I've found. Oh, he's so close. Maybe I'll try the rubbing on the lips technique. Oh, sometimes that stimulates a feeding response. He's really interested in it. The tricky part with baby snakes is, I mean, each snake has its own personality. So you don't know how they're gonna eat or how they want to eat. So you kind of have to go through all the different techniques on presenting the food to see what works for each individual snake. And sometimes it's just putting it in there and leaving. Yep, that's kind of the, the last resort. I'm rubbing it all over his face. All right, I'm gonna leave it in there then. Yep, and then we'll get this guy back into his cage. Yep, he doesn't want it yet. He might be one to eat in the dark. Yep. All right, let's try this baby. I give them an initial chance to smell it. What oh, was that? That was a miss. I don't think he was even striking to eat it. He's just angry all of a sudden. Here, sometimes it works to when they're uh, hissing to just plug up their mouth. Nope, that didn't work for him. Can you then flick your tongue so you can at least tell that it's food? Nope, he just wants to strike because he's mad. All right, okay. well, we're gonna leave that in there too. All right, so we have two more, seven more over there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, let's see. There's some hissing coming from that cave. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to offer the food directly into the cave before lifting it up and possibly freaking him out. Do you want it from here? Nope, I think he's just hissing at it. Here, look, food. Tricky part here is he is so preoccupied with hissing and striking at the mouse that he isn't flicking his tongue. And because he's not flicking, he doesn't have a chance to figure out that it's food and not just a threat. 
So I'm just gonna hold it here until he at least flicks his tongue once, because right now he's just striking to strike. This isn't a food response strike. All right, and now he's at the point where he's been worked up for so long that he, there's no chance he's actually going to eat anymore. So I'm going to put his cave on him so he can calm down, put the mouse in front of the cave, and we're gonna slide him back into the rack like that. Now let's try this guy. Maybe you'll wanna eat. You're very curious, you're not hissy. That's a good sign for eating your first meal. I'm gonna go back and forth. Oh, what was that? Why don't you guys rap? And now he's not interested. So far we've gotten two to Wait. bite and leave. I mean, this is our first time with baby Argentines. Maybe that's kind of something they do. I would imagine yeah. they would rap like their parents do though. I would so, think so. What we're gonna do next is, I mean, we're all kind of learning together, guys. This is kind of fun. Uh, we're gonna slide all of the babies back into the rack and leave them for about half an hour and then check back on them. Maybe we'll try because these guys were pulled out yeah. and brought here. That so maybe we'll try and feed right in front of the, the rack. That'll work, let's do that. All right, this row, that's the five that we just tried to feed. Yep. So we're gonna let them sit for a bit. So let's try this technique. We're gonna open the bin and instead of disturbing him by moving them into a separate room, which I think stressed them out too much, we're just gonna offer the food in the same way as before. Whoop, oh, we have scary. a shy one. You're a shy one. Okay, if he's already ducking back, that tells me he's not gonna wanna come out and grab the food or he has a, slow, a low chance of doing that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and push him back in with his food. Oh, that one's an explorer. Wow, you moved your paper towel all over. Look at that. One thing you typically don't wanna do is clean their enclosure right before you feed them because it's gonna stress them out too much and they're not gonna eat anyway. If there are any poops in here, I'm actually gonna leave them until after they eat. You had to touch your lips? Nope. We're bashful. All right, there you go. Maybe none of them are gonna eat. Yeah, maybe not. Who knows? This is gonna be a fun video. Oh yeah. <laughs> this guy's in his cave. You know what? I'm gonna just try not even bothering him. Just dropping it in. I'm gonna leave it right there. This one has a note that he is spicy. Yeah, he might eat. So he might, or he might just strike to strike, as yep. we call it. Here you go. Can I plug up your mouth with a mouse? Can you at least smell it and acknowledge it? No. No, nope, doesn't wanna. All right, well, there you go. And sometimes this is what happens, where you just have a clutch where you just drop feed all of them. All of them, apparently. <laughs> this is why we only thawed 10 mice. Exactly, that's another thing you have to learn <laughs> yep. over time is, if you have 20 snakes, you don't thaw 20 mice. <laughs> right. You can that's, always thaw more. That's just wasteful. All right, another one in this cave. This one I'm gonna poke, poke a bit with the mouse. Oh, and now he's hissing at me. Sometimes you can poke him, grab their attention, and then they grab the mouse. But in this case, he is hissing as a result. So I'm just gonna leave it in the opening for him. All and right. none of the original 10 ate. So now what we do is we let them sit for half an hour, check in on them. If they still haven't eaten, I might leave them in overnight and we'll check tomorrow. All right, it's been about an hour. So now we're gonna check back in on the babies and, oh, your mouse is gone. All right, that one ate. How about you? Oh, nope. You did not eat yet. Oh God, I'm just gonna go through all these you didn't eat yet, so those I'm gonna leave overnight. Uh, oh, you're thinking about it. Okay, good. Uh, you ate, you ate. Oh, and you're an angry one, but you still ate. That's good. You're thinking about it. Oh, you ate. And last but not least, out of the first 10, and you ate. Okay, so it's like a 50-50 for uh, whether they have eaten or not for the first 10 anyway. I think what I'm gonna do then is maybe tomorrow I'll come back and I'll just drop feed the rest because it seems like that's what they like if they're gonna eat at all. And maybe they'll just start taking from tongs later on. Yeah, okay, we figured out the trick for the Argentine Moas. You just have to drop feed them. All right. So of all the ones we drop fed, the only ones that ate were the ones that ate before leaving for the evening. So the ones that were left drop fed overnight still didn't eat. But you know what? I think that was our best shot at getting them to eat because they didn't really want to take from the tongs at all. So we're just going to go ahead and assuming that's what Argentine boas seem to prefer, we're just going to drop feed the remaining 12 babies. All right, today in our breeding adventure, we are going to be giving the first meals to all the baby ball pythons that hatched with us. So for this, you get to all join me as I grab a hopper mouse. And we have 10 babies, but I only thawed six mice. You never want to thaw the same amount of mice as you have babies, especially on the first meal because not all of them are gonna eat. So this reduces some waste. So we're gonna go up here, open up this normal. And these were just thawed and then replaced in freshly hot water because ball pythons have heat pits so not only do they recognize food based on smell but they also recognize it based on its heat signatures so you'll have a better chance at getting a baby ball to eat its first meal I would assume anyway we haven't bred them before but I would assume it would help to have a higher temperature of the rodent looks like he doesn't want to take it yet so I'm gonna leave it in there and we'll try the next one does this one want to eat oh he's a shy one he tucked his head in I see your shed so you should be ready for food since you shed there beautiful shed by the way he 
he's gonna be shy, so I'm gonna just go ahead and drop feed it. Let's see if we can get one of them to take from the tongs, though. How about the banana morph? Are you hiding here in your cave? Jerk face will take them. Jerk face? Yeah, she's yeah. here and hungry. Yeah, we've renamed her, by the way, to the worst. She yeah. is the worst. Yeah, look at her. Yeah, hi, She'll worst. Eat. You're the worst. You don't get these foods. I think for this one, I'm gonna try something else. I'm going to take off the cave. What a cute baby ball. Oh my gosh. Hi, cutie. Okay, we're gonna try our back and forth feeding technique. Back and forth. Oh my gosh. Did you just strike it to strike? Or are you actually gonna eat it? You didn't constrict there. You let go. So let's try one more time. Oh, we're flicking our tongue a lot. Nope, we don't want it. Okay, drop feed it is. How about this pastel? Oh, I see a nose sticking out. Now, you might notice that the paper towels are kind of dirty and they urated on them. They don't have a meal in them yet, but the urate and any poops right now are just from absorbing the yolk from the egg. So they sometimes do still poop even though they haven't eaten yet. And I'm not gonna change it right now because if I change that paper, then that's gonna stress out the ball python and he's definitely not going to eat afterwards. What I'm going to do is offer food and then change the paper. No, are you guys not gonna eat on camera? All right, well, drop feed it is. How about, ooh, banana pastel. Oh, you're so pretty. Hi, cutie. Can I poke, poke, poke? Grab your attention by a little poke. Do, do, do. I think you want it. No. Well, this is proving to be a not a very exciting video. I've drop fed all six rodents, pulled out the tags. This is what we like to do here is halfway pull out the tag if something has something drop fed in it, because that'll catch your eye and it reminds me you to come back and check the drop fed before you leave for the night. You just, then if they ate or whether you just pulled out the food, you can then push the tag back. That's just something, a little tr trick we've learned. So I'm going to let the uh, tags pulled out. I probably should have just done like all in a row, but I didn't. I picked the fun morphs to feed. I shouldn't have done that. Anyway, I'm going to check back in a bit and then move all the non-eaten rodents to the remaining four ball python babies. All right, since none of these guys wanted to eat their frozen thawed mouse, we're going to try frozen thawed rat pinky next. It'd be convenient if they were already on rats, I guess, by the time they went to their new home. So this might be a good thing. Where is the baby? This should be a pastel. There you are. Hi, cute little baby. Pastel ball. Oops, I turned my flash on. Sorry. Here you go. Do you want this tasty rat? Oh, it's my- Oh! Well, that didn't count. You have to actually wrap it, not just strike it. You're just striking to strike. Okay, well, I'm gonna lay it there just in case you want to eat it and you're confused. We're gonna check- You just flipped over! All right, well, you do you. I'll check on you later. How about the banana baby? Hi, hello. I see you under your rock. Do you want- Thanks for messing up your paper towels, by the way. Do you want a frozen thawed rat? Okay, I just took out the whole bin because he's facing this way. Aren't you, cutie? Here, look. It's that tasty. Why are you guys doing this? You're just striking it. Here, I'm gonna lay it right there. Oops, right there. Now please eat it. None of the ball pythons decided they wanted to eat a rat pup, a frozen thawed rat pup. So I think that means we're gonna have to move on to live next with these little stinkers because it's been a while. Yeah, I've been trying with you. You're so darn cute though, aren't you? You're so cute. So now I have to make a decision. Should I offer the, oh wow, you're sassy too apparently. Anyway, the decision I have to make now is should I offer them a live mouse or a live rat? And what there is to consider is when these are eventually sold, what would be easier for their future owners to find and source for them. And I think a live mouse is gonna be easier for their new owners to find than a live rat. It would be nice if they took a live rat because then they're already on rats by the time they have to upgrade them to them anyway. But that's gonna be difficult if they're gonna be live eaters. That's gonna be tough for their owners to find as opposed to a live mouse. So we're gonna try live mice. Whoa, just kidding, I spoke too soon. I hadn't checked all 10 of the babies before I filmed that clip. And it turns out two of the 10 decided to eat their frozen thawed rat uh, fuzzy. One one is the accidental banana uh, pastel spider. Yeah, you weren't supposed to be a spider. No, you weren't, but you ate your frozen thawed, so I'm proud of you. And then the other one that ate the frozen thawed was this normal. Good job, buddy. I'm so proud of you. Yay, you ate your frozen thawed. And it was a rat. So that's like the best of both worlds, frozen thawed and a rat for the baby balls. So that's awesome. Now we just have eight left to get eating. And bouncing back to the baby Argentine bows, who I've also been struggling with a little bit. This one, which is the one I gave the first live rat to ate it. Good job, buddy. I see the bulge right there. You ate the little rat pup. Good job. I'm proud of you too. I know you're not happy. You should be happy. You just ate. Yeah, good job. You eated something at least. Not frozen thought. I would have rather had that, but live is something. Ta-da! After offering live rat fuzzies to all of the Argentines that did not want to eat or had refused to eat anything at this point, we are now down to only three.
three of 22 that haven't eaten. So live was the trick, even though I'd say, let's see, two thirds of them. I probably took to Frozen Thought eventually, but so anyway, now we only have three left to get eating, which I think they'll take live eventually too. But for the first offering, got so many non-eaters to take it. So that was the trick, live. And for the last segment in today's video, we are going to give first meals to the baby false water cobras. Now we bred these last year too, so this isn't a new species that I'm trying to troubleshoot to get to feed, but I wanted to include them because they're such unique snakes and have a unique diet. Oh, look at you soaking in your dish. They eat a lot of amphibians and fish in the wild, hence false water cobra. I mean, they eat a lot of aquatic things. And because of that, they can be tricky to get eating mice in captivity. And even when you get them eating mice, you still want to give them a variety of food items, including frog legs or other amphibians and fish. But for convenience sake, we are going to try to get these guys on rodents before rehoming them. Hi, cutie. You are adorable. So I think first we're going to try offering frozen thawed rodents right off the bat, unscented, and we'll see how many take them. All right, baby number one. And these guys are like a week old, week and a half. So it should be a good time to offer food. Do you want this fuzzy mouse? I think you want to try it. It's really tasty. Come on. I don't want to have to scent it for you. So we're going to try just unscented frozen thawed. Oh, you're just huffy. Okay. Well then what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop feed it, leave it in there and just leave him alone for a couple hours and see if he takes it like that. Then we'll try this one. Oh, you're way in the back. All right, baby number two. Do you want a frozen thawed fuzzy? Or are you just gonna hood up at it? You're just gonna show off, be scary to it? Okay, well, I'll drop feed you too. Oh. Oh, you're gonna eat? You're gonna be the first one to eat for us? You're gonna take it straight from tongs too? Oh, he's rubbing his lips on it. He's really interested. Oh, do you see his body pushing it back? Oh, these are all signs. Hey, and the mouth opens. Good job, buddy. All right, look at you go. Okay, I'm just gonna leave you in here with your food and let you chow down. Hooray! So this is why you always try to feed frozen thawed from tongs right off the bat, because some of them might take it. And if they do, it just makes it that much easier to get them conditioned and ready for new homes. All right, I have now drop fed all the babies and it looks like one of them decided to eat from tongs and the rest we're gonna check and see if they eat the drop fed frozen thawds. If they don't, then next up is probably scented. I don't think I'm gonna do live with these because they're such amphibian and fish eaters. I think they will take a scented frozen thawed fuzzy. All right, so update on the false water cobras. I have been able to get eight of the 14 to take frozen thawed unscented fuzzy mice and they took them all actually on the first try, which was awesome. The remaining six babies though, I've been trying to get to eat unscented frozen thawed fuzzies and they're just not having it. So next thing I'm gonna try is taking a fuzzy and wiping it on a frog to scent it and and then it might taste like something they would prefer to eat. But I think to give myself the best odds, I'm going to look online to figure out what amphibians or what frogs false water cobras eat in the wild. All right, when it comes to scenting, this is typically what I do. I looked up the false water cobra range map, which is actually more of South America than I thought it was, but a lot of Brazil there, but some other surrounding countries. So then I looked up frogs in Brazil and I have a whole list here. And of them, we have glass frogs in the zoo and we have South American bird poop frogs in the zoo. And check out the South American bird poop frogs range map overlaps pretty well with the false water cobra. So that would be a natural diet for smaller individuals, like babies, like what we're trying to feed since bird poop frogs are like only that big as adults. So what we're going to do is we're not going to feed a bird poop frog to the false water cobras. That would be a very expensive meal or diet for them to be feeding when we rehome them. Instead, I'm just going to take a fuzzy mouse and wipe it all over a South American bird poop frog, or in this case three, to make it smell like a frog. And maybe we can trick these baby false water cobras into eating this mouse. Sorry frogs, but thank you for your scent. Okay, I have two that are now definitely not mice anymore. They are for sure South American bird poop frogs. Hey, look, here is a frog for you. It's not a mouse, I swear. Now try to eat it. We'll feed this one to this little cutie. Oh my gosh, you're so stinking cute. Here, look, do you want a South American bird poop frog? It's pretty tasty. Uh, oh wow, we're getting a lot of tongue flicks actually. Those short quick tongue flicks are actually a sign of interest. And now if I take the mouse and I rub his lips with it, that's kind of a technique I like to use. Oh, you are very interested in this thing. It's definitely not a mouse. It is now a frog. Oh, are you gonna take it? Sometimes 
extra movement catches their eye too. Oh my gosh, okay, that worked. I was just about to say, if touching their lips doesn't work, then sometimes just additional movement does because they think it's gonna run away from them. Hooray, dude, that's your first meal. It just had to be turned into, magically, a bird poop frog, and now you love it. Okay, I had those fuzzies and it worked on one, two, and I thought another and sent it another. It was on that leaf, it's gone. That means you ate. Yay, it worked for three so far. So I have three more to do that with. So I'm gonna drop, scent three more fuzzies and drop them with those three and hope it works. And it worked. Scenting with the South American bird poop frog worked on the remaining six false water cobras that didn't want to eat unscented. So they're all on frozen thawed fuzzies now. This one is uh, actually a really pretty falsy. It's nice and light in color. Uh, but yeah, that's one of our tricks for species that have unique diets. Look it up online. Doesn't take very long to see where ranges overlap with their prey items and what you have access to to scent rodents with. Now, we're pretty fortunate in that we have a lot of frogs in the zoo and we were able to scent with one of those, but yeah, it, it does work really well when you can do it. So I hope you enjoyed today's unique video of feeding snakes, baby snakes, their first meals. We figured we would do this because we show a lot of eggs hatching and babies being born and all that, which is very exciting, but it gets tricky sometimes, the next step, which is getting them to eat and eat enough for them to be able to be rehomed. Uh, that's one of the downsides sometimes to breeding snakes is you get babies that refuse everything and anything and sometimes a few of them don't even thrive no matter what you do. Now in today's case, we had really good luck in getting all of these snakes to eat eventually. You just kind of had to troubleshoot with the uh, Argentines and the ball pythons. The false water cobras were a lot easier than I was expecting, honestly. We found a trick that worked beautifully apparently. Um, yeah, so we just wanted to give you a little more insight as to what it's like to breed snakes. It's not just hatching eggs or having babies be born and then they're ready to go. There's a lot more work that goes into it after the babies are existing. <laughs> so thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned something new, maybe learned some new tricks and tips to get your picky snakes at home to eat. Thank you Patreon backers for your amazing support as always. And I'm going to play with this adorable little false water cobra now. Oh my gosh, he is so cute. I love him.